Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today we're going into a wonderful teaching by Dr. Joseph Murphy. This one comes from a book called Miracle Power for Richer Living. And he dedicates his teaching to this idea of a secret miracle power for infinite riches. Joseph Murphy was an amazing teacher of the law of attraction and the Neville Goddard method essentially and he was very adept at creating affirmations that I find to be transformational. His teachings are inspirational. I always get something from these and we're going to read about using this secret of miracle power for infinite riches. It is your God-given birthright to be rich, which means you are here to express the fullness of life along all lines for glorious living. You exist on earth to lead a happy, joyous, and glorious life. In other words, the life more abundant, infinite riches are omnipresent, and you should begin to realize that the treasure house of infinity is within your own subconscious depths. Begin now to extract from that marvelous gold mine within you everything you need, money, friends, a lovely home, beauty, companionship, and all the blessings of life. Whatever you want, you can bring forth when you apply the proper technique, i.e., when you apply the know-how of accomplishment. Dave Howe, an old friend of mine, told me about two geologists who had graduated from the same college and who had been brought up in the same town. One knew about the mind's treasure house within him. The other did not, but he depended on externals such as physical appearances, conditions, and general topography of the soil. This man spent three weeks in a certain area in Utah with all the modern equipment of his profession and found nothing. The other man with the right mental equipment followed up in the same area and found in the first hour a vein of uranium and a vein of silver. Where was the wealth, the riches? I believe you will conclude that the real riches were within the mind of the second geologist who believed in a guiding principle within his subconscious which would lead him straight to the hidden wealth, the greatest secret in all the world. One man recently said to me that the greatest secret being unfolded today was in the genetic field. And now, as a consequence, modern science could alter man's basic genes so that we could create as many Einsteins, Beethovens, Edisons, etc. as we would like. He failed to see that the living spirit God is within man, which can't be changed. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Man is more than his body, his hereditary characteristics, his family tree, the color of his skin, eyes, and shape of his body. Man is transformed only one way, and that is by the transformation of his mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12.2 Others say that interplanetary travel and nuclear fission represent the greatest secrets of our times. The greatest secret is that the kingdom of God is within man, which means that infinite intelligence, boundless wisdom, infinite power, infinite love, and the answer to every problem under the sun are locked in his own subconscious mind. Man is looking for the greatest secret in the world everywhere but within himself. Begin now to tap these tremendous powers within you and you will begin to lead a full and happy life based on God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6.17 I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. John 10.10 your right to be rich. It is normal and natural for you to desire prosperity, success, achievement, and recognition in your life. You should have all the money you need to do 
what you want to do. And when you want to do it, there is no virtue in poverty because poverty is a mental disease and it should be abolished from the face of the earth. Wealth is a state of mind. Likewise, poverty is a state of mind. We will never eradicate all the slums in the world until we first wipe out the slums and belief in poverty and lack in the mind of man. During private counseling and when talking to people in foreign lands, as well as during interviews with people following lectures, both here and abroad, I hear the constant old refrain, there is nothing that $25,000 or $50,000 would not cure in my life. This refers, of course, to those who suffer from pecuniary embarrassment and who are financially handicapped. They fail to realize that wealth is really a thought image in the mind and that if they follow the simple techniques as outlined in this book in using their subconscious mind, wealth will flow to them in avalanches of abundance. It is your right and that of your family to have excellent food, good clothes, an ideal home, and all the money you need to buy the good things of life. You need a period every day for meditation, prayer, relaxation, and recreation, and the time and facilities necessary should be available to you. To prosper means that you begin to advance mentally, spiritually, intellectually, socially, financially, and along all lines. How he discovered the riches of his mind. Recently, I talked with a man who said that he had a streak of bad luck and misfortune. He owned a home, but it was mortgaged to the hilt. He didn't have enough money to buy the basic necessities of life for his family. Also, he could not meet the mortgage payment or the grocery bills. His medical expenses were being paid by his brother and in his own words, his life was a mess. I explained to this man how the infinite intelligence within his subconscious could reveal to him everything he needed to know at all times, that he could receive inspiration, guidance, new creative ideas, and a solution to financial problems. I added that if he used his subconscious correctly, it also would provide all the money he needed and that he could experience financial freedom beyond his fondest dreams. Accordingly, I gave him two abstract ideas, wealth and success. He agreed that wealth is everywhere and that he was born to succeed and to win in the game of life as the infinite power within him cannot fail. At my suggestion, he relaxed, became quiet at night, and repeated slowly, feelingly, and with deep understanding, wealth, success, wealth, success. Taking these ideas into the deep of sleep, he understood that whatever he impressed on his subconscious would be magnified and multiplied on the screen of space. The secret is that his last waking concept prior to sleep is etched on his subconscious mind each night as he repeated these two words wealth success he was activating and releasing the latent powers of his subconscious and the law of his subconscious being compulsive he was compelled to express riches and success this man recognizing that the source of his supply was his own subconscious mind proved that when used in the right way, it never fails, and in unforeseen ways meets his needs regardless of circumstances. He was offered 25000 cash for a lot, which he had for 10 years, and for which he was in arrears for monthly payments, and which he had been unable to sell for over a year. His lot was needed for a new building, which the purchasers wished to construct at once. He discovered that infinite riches are all around him, as well as within him. The thought in his mind was the connecting link which united him with the treasure house of infinity. Infinite intelligence within your subconscious can only do for you what it can do through you. Your thought and feeling control your destiny. I can assure you that this man, as he follows this technique I gave him, will never be wanting all the days of his life. Recently I had a wonderful letter from a widow who listens every morning to my radio program. 
The following is the essence of the letter. She pointed out that her husband had died a year previously and had left no insurance. She had three children to support, the house was mortgaged, and she only had $500 in the bank. Friends paid the funeral expenses for her deceased husband. She wrote, I heard you quote from the Bible, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory, Philippians 4.19. And you elaborated on this by telling us that if we tune in on the infinite within us and believe in our hearts that no matter what it is we really need to bless us, comfort us, provide for us, or inspire us, the divine presence would respond, as it is written, before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Isaiah 65, 24. I sat down and began to think of God supplying all my needs and hearing me as I was praying, and a great sense of peace and harmony came over me. About two hours later, in walked my brother-in-law, who said to me that he knew of my predicament, and that he also was aware of the spending habits and profligacy of his brother. He told her he wanted to take care of her and the three small children, assuring her that neither she nor they would ever want for the good things of life. He gave her a $10,000 cashier's check and set up an arrangement with his attorney and accountant to see to it that a weekly sum of money was sent to his sister-in-law for the rest of her life. This was in the form of a trust fund, legally instituted, which took care of the children also. This widow, recognizing that God supplies all her needs, and that even before she asks the answer is within her, proved to herself the existence of the inexhaustible reservoir within her. A young attorney who had lost a few cases was despondent, gloomy, and full of self-criticism and self-condemnation. He found himself with a lot of financial reverses and was deeply in debt. I explained to him that his thoughts are definitely creative and that conditions, circumstances, events, and experiences accurately reflect his habitual thinking and imagery. I pointed out that if his thoughts produce lack and limitation, likewise thoughts of peace, success, prosperity, right action, and abundance sustained regularly and systematically would reproduce themselves after their kind. In the same manner, as men do not reap grapes from thorns or figs from thistles. For the law is that man is what he thinks all day long. Moreover, it is true that one spiritual thought is more powerful than 10,000 negative thoughts, and that thoughts you originate feelingly and knowingly will create for you whatever you wish to experience from this day forward. I laid out a program for him to follow and asked him to remind himself frequently of the riches of the infinite within his subconscious mind. Accordingly, I gave him the following prayer technique. He affirmed slowly, quietly, and feelingly as follows, three to four times a day. Today is God's day. I choose harmony, success, prosperity, abundance, security, and divine right action. Infinite intelligence reveals to me better ways to give greater service. I am a mental and spiritual magnet irresistibly attracting to me men and women who are blessed, comforted, and satisfied with my counsel and decisions on their behalf. I am divinely guided all day long, and whatever I do will prosper. Divine justice and divine law and order govern all my undertakings, and whatever I begin will result in success. I know the law of my mind and I am fully aware that all these truths I am reiterating are now sinking into my subconscious mind, and they will come forth after their kind. It is wonderful. He made it a special point never to deny what he affirmed, and when thoughts of lack, fear, or self-criticism came to him, he would immediately reverse the thoughts by affirming, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23, 1. A few years have passed by, and today this young man has gone up the ladder of success. He is now a prominent judge. When your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. A real estate salesman who attends my lectures on Sunday mornings and listens to my radio program said to me that his sales were falling off badly and that he had incurred a lot of financial obligations 
and found himself deeply in debt. He added that he had not made a sale of a property or a home in eight months. In talking to him, I discovered that he was envious, jealous, and highly critical of the sales techniques and processes of other salesmen who were making almost daily sales. I pointed out to him that jealousy and envy generated by himself would tend to impoverish him and attract all sorts of lack, limitation, and misery to him. He was made to see that his thought is definitely creative and that what he thinks and wishes for the other he will create in his own experience for the simple reason that he is the only thinker in his universe and is definitely responsible for the way he thinks about others as well as about himself. He then reversed his attitude of mind and began to wish sincerely for all his associates' success, achievement, wealth, and all the blessings of life. His constant prayer is, I am a child of the infinite, and his riches flow to me freely, joyously, and endlessly. I am enriched in all ways with happiness, peace, wealth, success, and outstanding sales. I am now stirring up the riches of my deeper mind, and rich results follow. I know I shall reap what I sow, for it is written, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Job 22.28 Today, he is a sales manager and is able and capable of instructing others how to sell wisely, judiciously, and constructively. The book of Proverbs says, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. Proverbs 13.18 The Bible says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mark 9.23 To believe is to accept something as true. When you analyze the root of the word, you learn it means to be alive. Make alive the truths of God by feeling the reality of them in your heart. It is much more than a conscious or theoretical assent. It means that you must feel the truth of what you affirm in your heart. It is belief in the minds of men that determines the differences between success and failure, health and sickness, happiness and unhappiness, joy and sadness, wealth and poverty. Wealth is a state of mind as poverty is a state of mind. You are truly rich when you are acquainted with the infinite presence and power within you, which men call God. You are truly rich when you know that your thought is creative, that what you feel you attract, and that what you imagine you become. You are rich when you know the creative process of your mind, which is that whatever you impress upon your subconscious mind will be projected on the screen of space as form, function, experience, and events. A young engineer said to me, I'm in a big jam and I have been praying continually, getting nowhere. I suggested to him that it wasn't necessary for him to pray continually, as if he were afraid to let go, but to leave it to the infinite intelligence of his subconscious mind. I explained to him that he could break the fixation spell and discover the spiritual riches within him by praying for someone else, John next door or May down the street, who is known to be up against it with a terrible heart condition, etc., twice a day. I suggested also that he pray for joy claiming the joy of the Lord is my strength, knowing that joy is the elon of life, the expression of life. He was to use no willpower or mental coercion in this mental and spiritual approach. At the end of a few days, a complete solution to his problem came out of the blue. He said to me, I was about to lose everything, and an old friend came to my aid by advancing me $25,000, which solved all of my problems. This man had discovered that riches are in the infinite storehouse of his subconscious mind. A young woman was quite concerned about her mother, who was afflicted with chronic stomach pains. The digestive tablets and antispasmodic medicine which her doctor had prescribed failed to relieve her pains. The daughter was setting aside half an hour in the morning and half an hour every evening praying for her mother's stomach that the stomach was a divine idea, that it was perfect, that her digestion was perfect. The unfortunate result was that she got stomach trouble herself. I explained to her that in order to help her mother, she must refrain from identifying with her mother's stomach ailment and keeping an appointment with it, because by her attitude she was holding on to the trouble by this close association. 
It had become a habit keeping a date with her mother's stomach pains. She had a sort of contract job. She changed her procedure and ceased dwelling upon organs of the body and other corporeal conditions. She identified with the infinite healing presence in the subconscious mind and began to claim quietly, feelingly, and lovingly that the healing presence and intelligence in the subconscious which created her mother's body was vitalizing, healing, and restoring her whole being into harmony, health, peace, and wholeness. She meditated quietly on these truths for a reasonable period of time, feeling that this particular prayer was the best she could do at the time. And then she would pray again when she felt the need to do so. Her results with this approach were remarkable in that all distress vanished from her mother and she herself was also set free. The reason this woman became ill while praying for her mother was because she was actually sympathizing with her, thereby submerging in the quicksand with the other. Compassion consists of standing on firm ground and throwing a rope or branch of a tree to the other and pulling him out. Sympathy means to agree with the negative or baleful aspects of the condition, which tends to aggravate the problem and which actually magnifies it. The reason for this is that whatever we focus our attention on, the subconscious magnifies exceedingly. All the riches of the infinite, such as inspiration, guidance, faith, confidence, joy, harmony, peace, love, abundance, and security are within you. Therefore, it behooves you when you visit a sick person to lift him up in your thought and feeling, giving him a transfusion of faith and confidence in the healing power of his subconscious. You can also give him courage and understanding. Remind him that with God all things are possible and imagine him as being whole, radiant, joyous, and free. To feel sorry for the ill person and to commiserate with him is to drag him down and this is a very negative approach. Be compassionate and call forth the infinite healing presence in his subconscious which will heal bless and restore his mind and body he restoreth soul psalm 23 3 you are the master of your thoughts not the servant your thought is creative every thought tends to manifest itself and cause your subconscious mind to respond according to the nature of your thought you can direct and steer your thoughts like you steer your automobile thoughts are things your thought image of a radio, television, automobile, wealth, health, or a trip to Europe is a reality in your mind. If all the autos in the world were destroyed by some holocaust, an engineer could redesign the vehicle based on the thought image in his mind, and in a short while, we again would have millions of cars. Your thought is the only instrument you can work with, and it pays fabulous dividends to direct your thoughts wisely, constructively, and judiciously. Your thought works with mathematical exactitude. For limitation and lack if you think of poverty, and for expansion, growth, and prosperity when you think along these lines. A young lady who is a very successful broker told me that all her success was due to the fact that she maintained a mental picture of success in her work, and it was the magnet which attracted to her the clients and conditions which accurately responded to her thought and feeling. This was her prayer every morning. I am a mental and spiritual magnet, attracting to me all those people who want what I have to offer. There is a divine exchange of ideas between us. They are blessed, and I am blessed. I decree harmony, abundance, right action, and inspiration, and I know my subconscious mind accepts these truths and assumptions. The real estate broker finds herself divinely led and directed along all lines. Her subconscious mind is the seat of habit. And as she continues to claim divine guidance, right action and abundance regularly and systematically, she is under a subconscious compulsion to do, say, and act in the right way. This is the meaning of the saying that thoughts are things. During a conversation I had with a prominent banker recently, he told me that some years ago he had been prone to look only at external conditions and had had the tendency to struggle and resist circumstances and attitudes of associates. He realizes now, however, that it is the quiet mind that gets things done. He quiets his body periodically, tells it to be still and relaxed, and it has to obey. 
When his conscious mind is quiet, calm, peaceful, and receptive, the wisdom of his subconscious rises to the surface, and he receives marvelous answers and solutions. It takes a good executive to draw forth the riches of his subconscious mind. A good executive has the mental acumen and sagacity to delegate work. Then he keeps his fingers out of the assignment he has asked the other to complete. A poor executive, whether in business, science, art, industry, or education, is always meddling with the pie he has asked the other to make. When you pray, you must be a good executive and learn to delegate authority to your subconscious mind, which knows all and sees all and will bring it to pass in its own way. When you pray or seek an answer, you turn your request or desire over to your subconscious mind with complete faith and confidence, knowing that whatever is conveyed to the subconscious will come to pass. You can know if you really turned your request over by the way you feel, i.e. if you are wondering how, when, where, and through what source, or if you are anxious and apprehensive, you do not really trust the wisdom of your subconscious. Cease pestering or nagging your subconscious. When you think of your desire, lightness of touch is important. Remind yourself that infinite intelligence is taking care of it in divine order. Recently I had a conversation with an old friend of mine whose doctor had informed him that it was imperative that he give up smoking at once. He had been smoking four packages of cigarettes daily and felt he just couldn't give them up. I explained to him an age-old truth. When your desire and imagination are in conflict, your imagination always wins. At my suggestion, he held a session with himself twice a day wherein he became quiet and receptive and affirmed and visioned as follows. Freedom and peace of mind are mine now. I know that as I believe and affirm these truths, they are sinking down into my subconscious mind, and I will be under compulsion to give up cigarettes as the law of my subconscious is compulsion. In my imagination, I see my doctor before me. He has just finished examining me and is congratulating me on my freedom from the habit and on my perfect health. He had a few sessions like this every day for about a week, at which time he got a response from his subconscious and he found he had no further desire to smoke. He had succeeded in impregnating his deeper mind with his habitual thinking and visioning. His doctor confirmed objectively what he had been thinking and visioning subjectively. This is how he discovered the riches of his subconscious mind. A psychologist was involved in a difficult lawsuit requiring her frequent attention and court appearances. Her prayer therapy was as follows. I let go and let divine wisdom and divine right action of my subconscious solve it. I loose the matter and let it go. Whenever she had to get in touch with her attorney or others involved, she would silently decree. The God presence within me is all wise and is taking care of this in divine order. She said to me, I am no longer keeping tabs on the God presence within as to how, when, where, or through what source this will be solved. I let go and let God take care of it. The sequel to her new attitude of mind was interesting. The foremost antagonist in the lawsuit passed away one night in his sleep and the others requested an immediate settlement. There was a divine adjustment and she was set free from all legal entanglements. Do not waste your energy and vital substance by thinking about old pet peeves, grudges, and grievances. To do so is like ripping open a grave. All you find is a skeleton. Focus your attention on the good things of life and realize the future will be wonderful because you know your present and harmonious thoughts will germinate and grow, bringing forth wonderful fruit such as health, happiness, abundance, and peace of mind. Liquidate the past and never mentally touch any negative experience or trauma that has happened in the past. Remain faithful to this mental attitude and realize that as you change your present thoughts and keep them changed, you will change your destiny. A mother was distraught and highly agitated because her boy of 18 had run away from home following an argument with his father. He quit college and joined a hippie colony. She was frantic and her doctor had to prescribe strong sedatives to quiet her mind and body in talking to her. I pointed out a few simple truths such as you do not own your son. He came through you, but not by you. 
Life principle is the common progenitor. We are all children of the one father or self-originating spirit. Your son is here to grow, to expand, and to overcome difficulties, challenges, and problems, thereby enabling him to discover the powers within him and to release his talents to the world. You can't help him by mental excitation, anger, and resentment. At my suggestion, she decided to release him completely lock, stock, and barrel. She decreed as follows, I loose my son to God completely. He is divinely guided in all his ways, and divine wisdom anoints his intellect. Divine law and order reign supreme in his life. He is guided to his true place and is expressing himself at his highest level. I loose him and let him go. She remained faithful to this prayer and daily claimed peace, harmony, joy, and divine love for herself. Some weeks later, her son went back to college, gave up his old haunts, and is doing well now in his scholastic work. He communicates with both his parents, but his mother no longer feels possessive. She has discovered the riches of divine love and freedom. This woman ceased thinking from the standpoint of circumstances and conditions. She began to think from that interior standpoint where there are no circumstances and from whence she was able to decree what conditions should be according to divine law and order. Then she let the subconscious wisdom take care of it. Think regularly and systematically of life, illumination, inspiration, harmony, prosperity, happiness, peace, and the life more abundant. Think these truths rather than this or that condition of them. Trust the operator of your subconscious mind to bring all these ideas you are contemplating into the way best suited for your particular case. This is a wonderful way to enter the life more abundant. Repeat the following meditation to help solve your problems for abundant living. I know that to prosper means to grow spiritually along all lines. God is prospering me now in mind, body, and affairs. God's ideas constantly unfold within me, bringing to me health, wealth, and perfect divine expression. I thrill inwardly as I feel the life of God vitalizing every atom of my being. I know that God's life is animating, sustaining, and strengthening me now. I am now expressing a perfect, radiant body full of vitality, energy, and power. My business or profession is a divine activity, and since it is God's business, it is successful and prosperous. I imagine and feel an inner wholeness functioning throughout my body, mind, and affairs. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and God shall raise him up. I know that no matter what the negation of yesterday was, my prayer or affirmation of truth will rise triumphantly over it today. I steadfastly behold the joy of the answered prayer. I walk all day long in the light. Today is God's day. It is a glorious day for me, as it is full of peace, harmony, and joy. My faith in the good is written in my heart and felt in my inward parts. I am absolutely convinced that there is a presence and a perfect law which receives the impress of my desire now and which irresistibly attracts into my experience all the good things my heart desires. I now place all my reliance, faith, and trust in the power and presence of God within me. I am at peace. I know I am a guest of the infinite and that God is my host. I hear the invitation of the Holy One saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. I rest in God all is well. There is so much to remember with this amazing teaching. One, you are here to lead the abundant life, a life full of happiness, joy, health, and rich living. Begin now to release the riches of the treasure house within you. Two, the real riches are within your subconscious mind. A geologist who believed in the guiding principle of his subconscious mind found the treasure in the earth the first hour. His associate, lacking this faith, had worked in that area for three weeks and found nothing. 3. The greatest secret in all the world is that God indwells man, but the average man is looking everywhere but within himself for wealth, success, happiness, and abundance. God is the life principle, the infinite intelligence, 
and infinite power within man, available instantly to all men through the medium of man's thought. 4. Poverty is a disease of the mind. Belief in poverty and lack produce lack and limitation. Wealth is a state of mind. Believe in the law of riches and you shall receive. Before we will ultimately banish the slums and poverty, we must first banish the slums and false beliefs in the mind of man. 5. You can tap the riches of your subconscious by claiming guidance, abundance, wealth, security, and right action. Make a habit of meditating on these truths, and your subconscious will respond accordingly. 6. If you lull yourself to sleep every night with two ideas, wealth and success, knowing that by repeating them you are activating the latent powers of your deeper mind, you will be compelled to express wealth and success. 7. Infinite intelligence in your subconscious can only do for you what it can do through you. Your thought and feeling control your destiny. 8. When you believe that the nature of the infinite intelligence in your subconscious mind is to respond to the nature of your request, the answers will always come to you and in ways you know not of. 9. Your thoughts are creative. Each thought tends to manifest itself in your life. Thoughts of promotions, riches, expansion, and achievement, provided you do not deny them, subsequently come forth after their kind. You promote yourself. You answer your own prayer because it is done unto you as you believe. 10. Be careful when you affirm wealth, success, right action, and promotion that you do not subsequently deny what you affirm. That would be like mixing an acid with an alkali, and you would get an inert substance. In other words, stop neutralizing your good. Thoughts are things. What you feel, you attract, and what you imagine, you become. 11. Be sure that you are not envious or jealous of the success, riches, and wealth of others. Your thought is creative. And if you are envious or critical of those who have amassed wealth and honors, you will impoverish yourself along all lines. Your thought is creative, and what you think about the others you tend to create in your own experience. 12. Whatever you really feel to be true and so decree in your life will definitely come to pass. Decree riches, health, beauty, security, and right action. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. 13. To believe is to accept something as true. Belief makes the difference between success and failure, riches and poverty, health and sickness. Believe in the riches of the infinite power within your subconscious, and you will experience them. 14. When you are in a big jam, break the tension by praying sincerely for someone who is very ill or in deep trouble, and suddenly you will find your own problem solved. 15. When praying for a loved one, be sure not to identify with the ailment or any part of the anatomy. Realize that the infinite healing presence is flowing through the loved one as harmony, health, peace, and joy. Vision the loved one as radiant and happy. Meditate quietly on these truths and pray again when you feel led to do so. Wonders happen as you pray this way. 16. Sympathy means to go down into the quicksand with the other, and it does not help the ill person. Have compassion and give the sick person a transfusion of faith, confidence, and love, knowing that with God all things are possible. 17. Your thought is creative, and every thought tends to manifest itself. You can direct and steer your thoughts in the same way as you steer your automobile. Thoughts are things. Your thought image of wealth, success, and achievement is the magnet that attracts to you all things that correspond with your thought image. 18. The quiet mind gets things done. Tell your body to be still and quiet your mind by thinking of the infinite intelligence of your subconscious, which knows the answer. When your conscious mind is still and your body is relaxed, the wisdom of your subconscious will rise to the surface mind. 19. A good executive knows how to delegate authority. You must be a good executive when using your mind. Turn your request over to your subconscious with faith and confidence, and you will get the appropriate response. You know when you have really turned it over because you are at peace. 20. You can give up smoking or any bad habit by decreeing freedom and peace of mind. 
while at the same time imagining a friend or a physician congratulating you on your freedom. As you affirm and vision an antipathy toward tobacco, your subconscious will take over and compel your freedom from the habit. 21. Many have discovered the wisdom of turning an acute domestic problem over to the God presence, trusting that divine wisdom and intelligence will bring about the solution which is best for all. The prayer is, I let go and let God take over, bringing about the perfect answer. 22. Liquidate the past and never dwell on old grievances or grudges. The future is your present thinking made manifest. Think regularly and systematically of harmony, beauty, love, peace, and abundance, and you will have a wonderful nature. 23. When a son leaves the home in anger, pray as follows. I lose him to God completely. He is divinely guided in all ways, and divine love takes care of him. Whenever you think of him, bless him silently by knowing God loves him and cares for him. As you do this, whatever happens will be good. And 24. Think of the infinite riches within your subconscious mind. Think of harmony, peace, joy, love, guidance, right action, success. All these are principles of life. And as you think of the life more abundant, you activate the latent powers within you. Your subconscious will compel you to express the abundant life right here and right now. Thoughts are things. 25. Use the meditation to secure the great power of faith for yourself. And this concludes the secret of miracle power for infinite riches. A lot of times when you listen to Joseph Murphy, some of the stories sound similar and the lessons seem to repeat themselves, but this is important. You can hear these stories and these ideas dozens, hundreds of times, but it's still important to regularly remind yourself of these lessons because we're not seeing it in the outer world as you would expect as clearly because of the subtlety of the simulation while it's happening you need to continue to remind yourself of these lessons and there are lots of really powerful lessons and affirmations that are given from this teaching the two main concepts are faith and using the infinite power to overcome problems Whatever problem that you might have, be it cigarette addiction or alcohol addiction, maybe you don't have enough money, your source is God. By tapping into this source, it will solve all your problems. It is the greatest secret in all the world. The kingdom of God is within man. So that means that within you is infinite intelligence, infinite love infinite power it's not as obvious as you think until you really look within and then it becomes incredibly obvious and you have a right to be rich it is your right in this world to use this power it's your choice you are free to use this power as you wish and as joseph murphy taught that power is in the subconscious mind the subconscious mind is that portion of your consciousness that is running your heart, making you breathe and do all those unconscious activities. But it also carries the knowledge of all things beyond just the regulation of your body. This subconscious mind is the universal mind according to Joseph Murphy. So when you tap into this subconscious mind, all things are possible. And the more and more you tune into this infinite source, the greater the possibility for all miracles to happen in your life. When you become aware of this, then obviously you are a child of the infinite and riches will flow to you freely, joyously, and endlessly. Infinite intelligence will always reveal to you the ways to acquire more wisdom, greater service, whatever thing that you desire or need in your life. Go and repeat those affirmations and prosperity will flow to you because it changes your subconscious mind. The subconscious does what you program it to do. And so you need to program it with these powerful 
ideas that come from a higher level of consciousness. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution. <laughs>